how if you're in a hurry, you'll take the steps two at a time? Or like, if you sleep in a bunk bed, you'll jump down to the floor? Well, if real life were anything like Spelunker for the Nintendo Entertainment System, you'd be fucking dead. There aren't many games I love to hate as much as this one. Splunker's considered a classic on just about every platform it's ever appeared on, and for good reason. It's an awesome platformer with a concept that was really interesting for its time. But at the same time, Splunker is also known for being frustrating, and cheap, and touchy, and irritating, and annoying, and seriously, that's gonna kill me? Spelunker was released for several platforms in the early 80s before it came to arcades in 1985 and the original Nintendo in 1987. Fast forward more than a quarter century, and here we are. The NES version is on the Wii U's Virtual Console, which we're playing here. Actually, it might be a bad idea to play this on the Wii U. You really... I mean, the gamepad's the least throwable controller ever! Some guy with a helmet. Evidently, there's treasure somewhere underground. But with nothing to go on but legends, you decide to go for it. And hey, if I've learned anything from the Goonies, it's that legends about treasure are always true. So you start looking for it. In fact, you might say you're spelunking. No pen, no sign, no air, no problem! <laughs> One of the cool things about Spelunker was that it sort of just dropped you into this massive cave. You know, there's no sun, no trees, no smiling clouds, and no end to the game's levels. In fact, it's similar to a game like Metroid in that it's just one huge world. It, it has individual areas, but they're continuous from one to the next. So it really creates the sense that this freaking cave's enormous! You know, that lack of arbitrary endpoints contributes to this, but Spelunker also does an outstanding job of creating that underground vibe. It's dark, it's musty, and aside from the occasional bat, there's not a single sign of life. In fact, your greatest challenge comes from the cave itself. The steam vents, the rocks, the hidden perils, the bat poop. There's death by poop in Spelunker. <laughs> So obviously, there's a lot to like about Spelunker, and there's a lot I like about Spelunker, but there's also Spelunker's notoriously irritating Spelunkerness, I guess. Which is to say, holy crap, this game kills you just for playing it. So, jump too far? Too bad, you're dead. Fall like two pixels from a rope? Tough shit, hotshot. A real man would have grown some wings. I mean, challenging game design is one thing, but a challenge from bad game mechanics? That's another thing entirely, and to its own detriment, Spelunker has a bit of both. You see, that's the thing about Spelunker. I mean, it has some great platform design, a really cool concept, they're part of what makes Spelunker. Unfortunately, though, the infuriating mechanics are also part of what makes Spelunker. And those are gonna firmly place you in one of two camps. You'll either love it and say, that's just Spelunker being Spelunker, or you'll say, nope, that plays like crap, this absolutely sucks. And unlike your little Spelunker guy, both of those arguments have plenty of oxygen.